All right, then it is, bleh, it is 1.30. Okay, we're gonna just hold for a minute here, a minute or two to see if a few other people show up. There's, there's quite a few that haven't checked in yet, but uh, we'll go ahead and there's one right there. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at what we're doing today. There's another. Late boomers. Um, there's another. So today we're going to get our face frame assembled and mounted to the nightstand, this little guy right here, okay? Um, that's gonna involve the process of cutting some pocket holes in the horizontal face frame pieces and locating where we want those to mount on the vertical styles and then clamping it into a little jig, getting it assembled and a few other things like that. Um, before we do that, a couple things. This is one of those little, uh, little lectures that I give when I have students here. So I figured what the heck, let's, you're not here, but you're here, right? So, um, and because at this point in the construction of these nightstands, um, there's quite a lot of drilling and using hand drills. Okay, we have a few little cordless drills, but for the most part, you guys will be using corded drills in here like this. Okay, now, my guess is that most of you think you know how to use a drill. Some of you may not. Some of you may actually know how to use a drill. Some of you probably don't. Um, and this is one of those things, I see enough issues in regards to this. Um, let me get these couple people in. Okay. I see enough issues in regards to the way people control and use drills in here that I go, that I go over this. So here we have a corded drill. It's a 3 8 inch corded drill. Um, this is a DeWalt. We have several different brands here. The brand really doesn't matter that much as long as it holds up for a decent amount of time in a high school shop. Now, a drill that has a cord as opposed to one that does not have a cord, generally, not always, has a lot more power than cordless drills. In other words, if I were to hold this drill like this and get it that bit embedded in something, and floor it, it could just about twist my wrist off. I mean, you just about break your wrist. There's quite a bit of power in these things, all right? Now, there's a reason these drills are designed the way they are, okay? This big black portion back here is a big kind of a soft rubber or semi-hard rubber um, kind of grip, right? There's a reason this is here, all right? There's a reason that this grip goes all the way up the side and there's a reason this has this little shape to it, okay? That little shape right here at the back of the drill that is just so happens to be directly in line with the bit, if you take something straight, you lay it in this rear grip, it lines up directly with the bit, okay? You guys see where I'm coming from? Now, there's a reason this shape is here and this softer rubber is here. My hand fits perfect just like that, okay? My finger follows on this piece of black soft rubber. My thumb wraps around this piece. There's a reason for that, okay? If I run a drill like this, okay, and I go and I start drilling in like this, chances are my drill is gonna t tilt down or tilt up, okay? And with smaller bits, you're taking a real good chance on snapping the bit off in your work. So one hand goes here at the back of the drill, directly in line with the bit. In other words, all your pressure should be coming directly in line with the bit. You're not putting pressure on it with the handle, you're putting pressure on it in line with the bit. So I've got one hand that I can run the drill and the other hand's the one that's putting all the pressure on it. I can put my hand like this, it's no big deal to put my hand like this on the back, see if you can see that on the back of it, okay? And drill like that. But this is where my pressure's coming from not here because if my pressure's here, the drill's gonna wanna do this or it might wanna do this. And we wanna drill as straight into our material as possible, okay? We snap drill bits off on a regular basis, especially the smaller ones, because students don't know how to use a drill 
and they're just going like this. They've got both their hands here. They're driving as hard as they can. All of a sudden, they're pressure, and they snap the bit off in their material, and that's a problem, okay? So that's my little thing on drills. Now you know how to use a drill properly. The same thing with cordless drills, okay? I've got a little cordless drill here. It doesn't have quite the ergonomic handle that the others do, but you're generally not drilling into heavier stuff with these little, these are little 12, I think it's a little 12 volt cordless drill. Not a lot of torque in these. I mean, I can just about stop it with my hand from drilling, but I still have a flat place back here where I can put my hand, okay? The same thing goes for, um, we have, well, we have one now that a couple of them broke and we'll get a couple more. This is an angle drill, a right angle drill. Okay, we need these on these nightstands. Right, that's the only way we can get inside here and drive these screws, okay? The angle drill, right? It's got a nice flat back on the head. That's where your pressure comes from right there, okay? All your pressure's right there, okay? We can't even put pressure on it. Here's the on switch right here on top, right? That's the on switch. There's no way to really put a lot of pressure on it holding it like this, so you have to have a hand under here, okay? So that's where your pressure comes from. All right, so it looks like everybody's pretty much here that is going to be here. Let's get started on this thing, okay? So according to the plans, let me pull them up real quick. According to the plans, if this thing would ever go away, uh, sneak in there. Okay, we've done everything all the way up to, we got somebody coming in. we worked our way all the way up to and through 13. Parts five, six, and seven are our face frame pieces, okay? So now we're sitting on number 14. It says cut out a design on part number seven, which happens to be the part that we did on the CNC yesterday, okay? It says cut out a design on part number seven by using the template handout or creating your own that's approved by the instructor. So what it's talking about there is, here's the piece we did yesterday on the CNC. This is the bottom rail. This sits right here at the bottom of the nightstand. That is the top, this is the bottom, okay? Well, what we normally do in our beginning classes is we'll take, we've got a couple of these templates like this sitting around and they're made for the nightstand, right? We'll take one of these templates and we'll place it right on your material, okay? Then we'll take and we'll trace it out. All right. Then we'll go to the bandsaw. We'll have a little X right here and an X right here. That tells us which side of the line to stay on on the bandsaw. We want to stay on this side of the line, not on this side of the line. Cut it off on the bandsaw. Then we go to the spindle sander and clean up the bandsaw marks left and clean up down to the line. But since we have this on it, we're going to forego doing that. So like I said, we have a couple of these templates laying around um, or students in the past have created their own shape, their own design on it. Um, as long as they don't go too far up and get into the pocket holes or expose this piece right here by going too far up. Okay. So that's the template. All right. The next thing you're supposed to do when it comes to this project is to create two pocket slots on both ends of parts six and seven. And that happens to be these two mid rails and the bottom rail that we did on the CNC. And then it wants us to measure and mark parts five, the styles, the long ones, against your assembled cabinet for the blah, 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 blah. All right, unless you guys can see it, it's not gonna mean a lot to you. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put pocket holes, two here, two here on the two mid rails and on the bottom row, all on the back, okay? So we're gonna do pocket holes first. Let's call this up and try it. All right, so here's our pocket hole jig, okay? You guys have already seen this work a couple times. Well, once, all right? Here's how we do it. There's three different holes on the top of this jig. You can choose any two holes you want. It doesn't really matter. As long as they're not too close to the edge of the board, you're golden. So I usually use these two right here that are close together. Clamp it. I've got a drill with a pocket hole bit on it. It's got the stop collar in the right place. It's going forward, not reverse. 
And yeah. then we put the cog in place. Flip it in for in. Don't put them on the opposite face. That's a really bad situation. Okay. When my hand is on the back of the drill, right? That's where my pressure is. That's where I want my pressure. There's one. There's really nothing too possible. They're a piece of tape. Here. Flip it in for end. Get it lined up where I want it. Plant it. Throw the holes. Uh, one more key, the bottom rail. I'm going to use these further, these holes that are spread further out. Just because I can. Clean that fence off. There we go. All right. Pocket holes are done. Okay, there's our two mid rails. There's our bottom rail. Pocket holes are done. Okay, these leave little nubbins on the ends. So I just like to make sure they're not going to get in the way. And the next one is this. All right. So, one of the things we need to do is to make sure we're placing these in the right spot on the nightstand. This one goes right here with the upper edge of it flush with the upper surface of the shell. So it blocks this ugly edge, okay? So this one needs to go here. This one, this upper edge, it's gonna be flush. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Okay, the upper surface of this one, it's gonna be flush with the upper surface of the shell. It needs to go right there. This last one goes flush to the top of the nightstand. So we gotta know where to place them. We're going to do is we're going to take our two styles. These are called styles. The vertical portions are styles. Okay. I'm going to place them how we want them. Now, this is all about, well, I don't like where that knot is. I like this other side better. This is all about looks and functionality. If there's a giant knot right here where you're going to be driving some screws, it's a bad idea. So where this one sits, no problem. If there's not any screws going to try to go into that knot, it's not going to cause an issue. This one looks pretty good that way. So I've got this. This is the bottom of our nightstand. This is the top of our nightstand. Okay. So I'm going to mark the top left and the top right. Okay. Now I want to locate on the edges of these styles where we are going to place these. Okay. And here's how we do it. I'm going to get the top of this style right here, flush and even with the top of the nightstand, okay? I'll take a sharp pencil and very, very carefully make a little mark on the edge of this style where the top surface of this shelf is. I'm gonna keep it in the same spot. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a little mark where the top of the shelf is on that style. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Get it flush at the top. Make a little mark here where the top of the shelf is in relation to the style. Make a little mark where the top of the shelf is in relation to the style. Now I want to give myself a really nice fine line going all the way across there. It tells me where these are going to be located. So I've got this one here. Now I don't know if you'll be able to see these, but I'll try. Okay, so I've got two lines on here, right? I've got one right here where the upper shelf is. That's where this guy's gonna slide right up to that mark, and that's where it's gonna mount. I've got one down here, okay, where the top part of the lower shelf is, and that's where this guy's gonna slide up right under that mark, 
Okay, so let's help. Let's show you how we put these together. It's out of the way for now. So we have this handy dandy little jig right here that we use to put together our face frame. Okay, so just like it was sitting on the nightstand, this would represent the top of the nightstand. When I marked top left and top right on these, okay? So basically it's gonna sit. There's my mark, put it just below my mark. There's my mark, put it just below it. The other piece goes there, okay? This is how it's gonna sit. The problem is we need to be able to get to these pocket holes on the back side of these boards. So we need to place this face down on the jig, all right? So all I'm gonna do is bring this over to it, flip them over, okay? Now, now my top right's here, my top left's here. Set these with the pocket holes up. Set it close to that line. Make sure this is the right way. Let me screw that up. Set it close to that line. Set this in place, all right? So I've got them about where I want them. Okay, a couple clamps. Now, what I want to do when I put this clamp on here, okay, see if you can see this. I want to put it on straight, as parallel to these rails as I can. If I put it at the clamp at an angle like this, or an angle like this, it's going to shift this thing. It's going to take it out of square. The whole idea behind using this little jig is to help keep the face frame square, 90 degrees, right? So we're going to take this, and I'm going to use this edge of the clamp and line it up with this edge of this rail. And we're just gonna put light pressure on it, not a whole lot of pressure. We're gonna do the same thing down here. All right, a little pressure on it. Now, when we're doing this, I usually always have a little piece of pine sitting here and a mallet. If we need to move something here or line it up a little better or tap it into place, we never want to tap directly on our material. You'll dent it. So we get a piece of scrap wood that we can easily take and just convince this rail that it's not where it needs to be. And make sure everything's flat to the jig. Okay, I'll give that a little cinch down. You need to bring this down a little bit. This way a hair. And flat to the jig. All right, so everything looks good. Looks square. Got a little pressure on it. All right, we're ready to go. So, all those pocket holes we just did. Take a drill. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if you can see it. I try to use a little bit longer bit when I'm doing pocket holes because with a shorter bit, I end up having to have the drill at too much of an angle. I want the drill at a low angle, right? If I drill it like this, I'm going to end up driving that screw right through the front of the face frame. So I like to keep it at a low angle, and a short bit won't let you do that. So we have a little bit longer bits for this, okay? So this is pine, really soft. So I'm gonna go very slow. And as soon as I feel it bottom out in the pocket hole, I'm gonna stop. If I just take this thing and punch it, floor it, right? It's a very variable speed drill. I can go slow or I can really boogie with it. But if I just punch it, I'm gonna drive that screw right through this pine and it's gonna come out the front of the face frame. It's gonna split it right here. It's just a mess. So we go nice and light, and we can feel it and hear it when the screw bottoms out in the pocket hole. In fact, on pine, I generally like to see, especially beginning students, I generally like to see them use a hand screwdriver to drive these instead of a drill, because it's very easy to split this and really kind of mess it up. So it's nice and easy. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Hopefully I got that the right way. 
I didn't know. I'll switch it out. Okay, six more. Doesn't take long. It's a piece of cake. Not hard at all. Especially in pine. If you're doing this in maple or oak, some of the harder materials we have here, this can be a real pain. At times, you may need to drive it a little ways, back it out, drive it in a little more, back it out. Because the screws that you use are self tapping screws. There's a tiny little slit in the tip of the screw that uh, helps it to kind of pre drill its own hole. So, and then we go, last one. All right. So, there's our screws. Yeah, I got it the right way. And there's our face frame. Okay, got a little sanding to do on it. That's about it. All right, so now we need to mount this. Okay, so we'll take our knife. Here. So, so you guys remember, this is the top of our nightstand where the larger opening is where we're going to put a drawer, right? One of the things we made absolutely sure to do is that when we added this back, that it was even. The back, the top of the back was even with the top of the sides here and here. We didn't want a big lip here, a big lip here. It had to be flush, okay? The same thing goes for the face frame. The base, base frame needs to be flush at the top of the nightstand. The reason for that is this. We're going to mount a top to this. We want a nice flat surface with no gaps, nothing sticking out to mount the top to it. If we mount this like this, we're gonna see these between this and the top. If we mount it like this, there's gonna be a gigantic gap over here when we mount the top. So we wanna be flush here. So here's how we do it. Now this is where those pocket holes we made originally come into play. There's three pocket holes here, right? On this side that we're gonna mount the face frame. And there's three pocket holes here to mount the face frame. You see the other two, and there's two more on the opposite side. That's how we're going to mount the top. Okay. So, face frame. All we do, I'm going to take my thumbs, okay, and I'm going to use my thumbs to feel when it's flush here at the top. And I'm going to take my index fingers, and I'm going to set them right here, and I'm going to try and line this up this way, left to right. And I'm just doing it by feel. When it's even, you're good. So now I've got it flush there, I've got it flush in here carefully because you will bump this thing and move it if you're not careful you clamp on it we always have to have a clamp over where we're going to drive a pocket screw otherwise it just pushes the material away from the cabinet it doesn't really good okay i double checked that it's where i want it but i didn't move it okay now we have our angle drill gotta get this guy out Okay, same thing. I'm gonna put all my pressure under the head of it here. I'm just gonna set my screw on the tip of the bit and I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna, I can find the pocket hole where it needs to go by feel. And as soon as I feel it bottom out, I'm gonna stop, especially in this part of the board. This stuff's smooth, soft too. If you go too hard into this, it's gonna compress that part of the board and the tip of the screw is gonna come shooting out the face frame. It happens all the time. And you'll feel it and you'll hear it when that screw sees it. There's our top. We'll get the bottom screw in. Now, this is a really good representation of this. I don't know if you can see or not, but my face frame's pushed. I can't point that way. My face frame is pushed that way. In other words, it's hanging over in here. And there's a gap here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see the pocket board. So this thing needs to shift that way before I put the screws on. That's what it makes such a nice little setup. Normally what I'd have is have you grab somebody that's working next to you and have them shift this over where you want it while you put the clamps on. But I don't have anybody here. So I'll try to do this by myself. I'm thinking what all I gotta do. 
is just put light pressure on the clamp. Shift this over where I want it. And then get a little more pressure on it. Looks like it worked. Another one. Okay, we've got a pothole here, a pothole here. Pretty straightforward. Same as usual. It's still a little clumsy in here, though. There's one. Gotta get both hands in here. There's those two. I got two left. One's in the middle. So all I'm gonna do. Take those off, set it right here, put a clamp over where my pocket hole is. Put it in here. Both hands on the drill. There's that one. One more, folks. And our last screw. Come on. All right, that's it. Cool. Clamp and there you have it. Okay, so our face frame is mounted. All right, how awesome is that? How, how cool is that? Didn't think that was going to happen, did you? Okay, so that's the face frame. Next on the plans, okay is going to be, okay, we've done that. We just assembled the face frame, check for square. When we check for square is when we put it in that jig. I know that jig is square, so as long as it sat tight in the corners in that jig, we're good, okay? When assembled, your face frame should be wider than the cabinet, which it is, right? We've got some of the face frame sticking off the sides. There's a reason for that. You'll see that when we get to do the side trim. We just attach the cabinet using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. The top of the face frame should be flush with the top of the cabinet. Now we're on step 19, to laminate material for the top, which is number four, okay? So laminating is one of those things that everybody's required to learn how to do here because it's an important step. And we're gonna go over that in detail, but basically just as an idea, so you have an idea, I want you to have an idea, right? It doesn't work if you don't have an idea. Laminating is the process of taking two or more boards and gluing them together to make a larger board, okay? Now we do this either with edge laminating to make a wider board, or we can do it face laminating to make a thicker board, okay? Um, we generally do not do laminating in grain to in grain, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But one of the biggest reasons is that the glues that we use are water-based, and this is the natural channel, cellular pathways that this tree originally got nutrients up to the leaves and things like that. So it just sucks the moisture right out of glue as soon as you put it on in grain, and it makes for a very weak joint. Not to mention the fact that there's not much surface area there to apply glue and you need surface area for a strong cutter. So we don't do ingrain. There's ways to do it. You can make finger joints on the ends. We don't have the tooling for it or the machine to do it. So we just don't do that. We buy boards long enough, all right? So um, 
one of the most important things of laminating is the whole idea here is to go get a wider board, right? But what you want is a wider board that looks nice. You don't want to see that joint if you can avoid it. Okay? You do not want to see that joint. All right. So um, it takes some time to take the boards and flip them and turn them and rearrange them until you get them the way you like them. The grain looks right and it looks like you might be able to get, get this done without seeing that joint. But we want to try and, and hide that joint as much as possible. Okay. So we most we do a lot of edge laminating here. Um, you would be edge laminating to for your top for your nightstand and possibly for your drawer front for the nightstand, depending on the material you could find for the drawer front. We also do a lot of face laminations here. Um, usually what we do for face laminations to make a thicker board are for um, are for table legs, things like that, coffee table legs, dining room table legs, things like that that need to be large and we just can't get the lumber um, that large. So that's the reasoning behind laminating, okay? And we'll go over that in depth um, later on in the week and we'll get the top laminated for the nightstand. Um, we'll get it milled down, we'll get it mounted and we are well on our way, okay? So we have one more thing we need to do, just so you know. A um, little share screen here, and all right. So here's our home page, right? Generally, if you're going to go and do something or find something you need to do, you're going to go to modules, okay? And here we are on Tuesday, okay? There is a quiz you need to take. Um, now you can either go here and open the information, basically the plans for the nightstand, that will help you get through this quiz, okay? Or when you open the quiz, there should be a clickable link to the plans. So there's five questions. All five questions revolve around um, certain specific areas in the plans. It's laid out really easily for you, okay? So what you need to do now is take that quiz. Um, once you've taken the quiz, please make sure you put your name in the chat window so that I can do the attendance. And once you've taken the quiz and entered your name in the chat window, you're welcome to take off. Have a good day. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, take care of yourself tonight. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow on hump day. We're halfway through the week. We're going to make it. All right. So take care of yourselves. Take the quiz. Sign into the chat window. And you guys have a great day. Bye.